Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think we're ready to start. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. We're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> we are. We're doing this every week for a while. We are doing it every week. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot to cover. There is a lot. Okay. So today we thought we would um, go ahead and talk about something that we see in our business students, our EFT practitioners that we have as clients. Um, and that is the pattern of da -da -da -da. perfection paralysis. Da -da 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 -da. Perfection paralysis. Perfection par paralysis. Say, Say that, that three times. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, what do we talk? What does that mean? Perfection paralysis. It's it's what we call um, the phenomenon that we see in EFT practitioners that so have to get something perfect mm -hmm. that it can take years. Right. The website that isn't quite right. Right. The practice forms that aren't quite tweaked enough. Mm -hmm. The graphic, um, the logo that still isn't done after working on it, etc. Right. The niche that hasn't been chosen and between four, I mean, it goes on and on. And so as a result of not being able to make a decision and not moving forward, they end up getting paralyzed in their practice. Yeah. yeah. I think that um, not making decisions is part of it, but also I think it is just a, a matter of, it's also like a, a part of that could be that, that you know what you want. It's just not exactly perfect. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's like a freeze response state freeze. of paralysis. Yeah. And under that often is usually shows up as procrastination, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. like putting off the first blog, right. putting off the publishing, the website, yeah. putting off that first class, putting yeah. off, um, and is procrastination kind of the bottom of the totem pole or does it go deeper? No, it goes deeper. I mean, we say that it's procrastination because that is the, that's what shows up. That's kind of like the condition or the presenting issue for someone is that they're, um, they're procrastinating. But underneath that, we know that all, all forms of procrastination are really based on fear, fear and anxiety, worry. Yep. What kind? What 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 kind of fears? Good can morning, lie? Jules. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> what kind of fears can underlie procrastination for okay. an EFT practitioner? Which, what, what what shows? What do you see? Um. So the fear. So fear is always sort of future focused. Um, regarding something based in the past. Okay. So. I think that it's really important, and I was just thinking about this this morning. I really want to write a um, an article on rehearsal, like the rehearsal mindset and mm -hmm. rehearsal when it comes to um, really nailing your EFT sessions with people, like the what mental mean? rehearsal. You mean that in happens advance, in advance of a session. Yeah. No. No. Like the 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 um, when you're working with a client or you're working with yourself rehearsing what it is that you're going to actually do okay. will bring up the fears. So um, I'm just thinking of like it, your past. So imagining that my first step in getting my website out there mm -hmm. is to hit, you know, actually publish on the program. Okay. And when I think of that, I, it, it's too broad for me to just tap on, even though I'm afraid to publish my website, or even though I'm afraid of going getting getting it out there, or I'm afraid that people won't like it, get down to what it is that you're afraid might happen. I love that question, and my clients, and I, especially business clients, I'm I'm scared that, and I usually follow with one more question. Yeah. And if that, yeah, then what? Right. Like, right. What would happen? Yeah. And so there's a lot of, I mean, we know they're influenced from the past, yeah, right? They're yeah. influenced from mm -hmm. the, you know, the first grade teacher that corrected oh, me yeah. and the art teacher and the music teacher and my mom or my yeah. dad or my grandpa right. or et cetera. So we know that those foundations begin early. Yeah, usually uh, you can actually say or ask yourself, you know, mom or dad. <laughs> I mean, really. Often. Often you yeah. can just ask mom or dad. Right. Um, primary caregiver, but for most people, it is mom or dad. Right. And um, sometimes you've been hit with uh, the double curse of you know mom both of, most of them, but um, but for many of us, it's just one. And so figuring out who that is, and even just imagining 
mom looking over your shoulder as you publish your website mm. or your <laughs> you know your seventh grade english teacher who was always on your back about grammar oh that'll you know? bring it up yeah okay yeah. what what are some of the fears that you find um especially with regard to their business so like what we're looking at with the whole series is what are the blocks and what are getting in the way mm -hmm. from eft Practitioners having rock and sock and practices, right? right. Thriving practices. Yeah. So, um, you know, an easy one is, all right, if I write that blog, mm -hmm. if I, whatever, publish that thing that I wrote, that people will judge me, judge me for content, judge me for any misspellings or syntax, sure. judge me because I didn't bring in a particular reference or study. Yeah. Re you know, people will judge me and criticize me for anything that I put out there, and that can be paralyzing. Right. Um, and I think it comes up a lot, especially with writing. I mean, it, it just, it, and so there, even be, uh, you know, the way that we set up the MBA is, um, there's, there are a lot of things that you can do if you want to get to the next, the next level of making it even better. There's always a way to make things better. That's there true. are always people that are experts that you can hire yep. that will help you to make things better. For example, the copywriter that we give um, people mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a place to go when you wanna tweak things. But what you wanna have to understand about this day and age is, it's better to get something out there and then get feedback from the environment about how is it doing and then tweak. You know, one of the lines that, um, that many people in, in the internet marketing business say uh, is important for you to realize as a small business owner is get the idea out of your head that your website is ever complete. Mm -hmm. It's never perfect, it's right. never complete, and it grows, and it expands, and it changes. And you know, I went and had to look at something on my website the other day, and I was like, oh, Wow, I need to I need to update it. And um and it could have left me in a place of paralysis, like thinking, oh, it's not perfect. It needs to be perfect. Let's shut it down. Right. Take the website down, remodel. And you know right. what? I have had clients that have done that, unfortunately. When it's just getting feedback uh, and looking at it again and doing a little bit and getting yourself out there, that's really gonna be the best forward movement that you can make, mm -hmm. right? I find that the fear of getting judged yeah. is kind of one level, yeah. but there's a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And if you're judged, mm -hmm. so what? Because people judge all the time. They always me, judge, me, yeah. me, me included. Yep. And therefore, what? what's the meaning? Well, right. oh, well, if they judge me, therefore, right. I'm stupid. Right. Therefore, I'm not smart enough. Therefore, right. I'm careless and I don't care. Right. And that brings shame because it's about me and who right. I am, exactly. right? And that can be devastating. Yeah. So it can often take a lot of strength to put yourself out there, right? And that's actually going to be the whole focus of our next topic next week. But what I want to say is what can result from that not only is paralysis and just a shutdown, but then what I call the rebound effect of, therefore, I'm never going to do this. Right. And I'm never going to write again. Yeah. And I'm never going to create a video. And I took that class, and then I went and did it, and I got that comment, and now I'm done with that. It's over the rest of my life. I will never create a video. <laughs> will never write. will never put myself out there. Exactly. We'll never... And that exactly. just is, you know, we see in the MBA people come back years later. Well, I tried that. When? Seven years ago. Mm -hmm. When? On AOL. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, or you know, I'm being silly, but in other words, that rebound of the devastation that results from that, where we can actually take the rebound and say, you know what, at that time I did it that way and I took it this way, but now I'm able to work with it and now I'm able to revamp and do it differently. Yeah. Um, but there's other fears. What else? Especially for EFT practitioners. What do you notice? Right. Um, so for sure, writing comes up, mm -hmm. um, and and if you if you're like excited to possibly do videos, then all of the all of the image of like do I look right, is my haircut, do I, you know, all do I have the right clothes on, right. all all of that kind of stuff, right camera, right equipment, you could really get lost down there. Oh that no, there, I see a glare. I, I there's know. There's a glare by the window. I know there we should, is. We should stop. We should. No. Um. Okay. So. Else? Um, all of that comes up, and I would say that before we talk about the other the other fears that come up, I would say that with EFT practitioners, 
um, or people that are just starting their own healing arts practice, what, why this shows up now versus showing up in your corporate job or showing up in, you know, your, your part-time gig or your, you know, some kind of, it, it, it's, it shows up more here because it's more important to you. Mm -hmm. If you didn't give a crap, it would, it wouldn't be showing up, but, but this is something that you're excited about. You're very passionate about. You've got a mission and a purpose now with yep. the work that you're doing. And then it becomes even more important for that's you to true. just get it right. So that's why I, I wanted to add that little piece. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, also the part with the EFT practitioners, I find that one of the things that they run into is feeling like they can't explain EFT well, right? For sure. Right? That somehow they're struggling yeah. with how to say it right, whether they should make it neuroscience-y, right. whether they should make it energy-based, whether yes. what 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 will people think? And then if, what if they ask me how to explain yeah. the amygdala and the hippocampus or what <laughs> you know. Right. right. You don't what I want to say is you don't have to, right? So in other words, there's no right way to explain EFT. Unless it you're depends. being asked to do a lecture on the neuroscience of EFT. Right, in which case there is a perspective that's being asked. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise. speak to the one that resonates for you mm -hmm. and trust that it'll resonate for the next person and, and try to have a few ways to describe it. Depending, you know, I'm not going to describe EFT to a 12-year-old the same way I am to a medical doctor, right. the same way I am to a psychotherapist right. or an acupuncturist. So, and you might not even need to talk about EFT at all. Right. And that's where we go back to niche. Last week's yes, yeah, topic absolutely. of, yeah, I don't even mention EFT. I just talked about how I, how I help people that are suffering from here get from here to there. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, but what I notice is just that fear that's even not spoken out loud of not being able to describe it well shuts me down from putting myself out there because then I avoid the dangerous situation of somebody asking me a question I can't answer. Right. Rather than saying, you know what? I actually don't know and I can't explain it. I don't completely understand how it works, but you know what? Here's been my experience. It right. works well with this and this and this and this. And you know what? I've got some resources that I can point you to Absolutely. for how that works. But that's usually only acquired once what once one taps on getting rid of the fear that that'll happen and then it paralyzes me so I don't put myself out there. Right. 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 So I bet that you can come up with three or four things right now that you could be doing to market your business. Mm -hmm. And out of those two or three things, I want you to think about which ones excite you, which ones terrify you, and which ones are exciting yet you haven't done it because you're afraid of not getting it right or right. not sure, insecure. See if you can at least have two that you want to move forward on, rehearse doing the first small step towards doing that and applying that, and then tap on your fears while listening to your limiting belief about it. And this is ideal with, um, with actually a SWAT partner. SWAT yep. partners are really, um, they take you to places or they just sit in uh, it sit in a place of, of listening to you and being the observer where you're able to make those connections and find those those uh, events from the past that are really just there replaying themselves over and over again. Yeah. You uh, know, there's um working on those enables you get to the place mm -hmm. of on your mark go get set right. In other words, at some point you just I mean I remember when I was. Uh, jumped out of an airplane, mm -hmm. right? And the worst part was like the seconds yeah. before. And yeah. finally, it's like as soon as you jump right. out, then it's a fun and free fall and exciting and all of that. But yeah. boy, that paralysis from just waiting and anticipating all of that, that just makes it, you know, devastating. So yeah. sometimes you just have to jump and then sometimes course correct. Right, exactly. And Getting feedback is important. So I'm going to put it out and I'm going to tweak it and I'm going to revisit it and I may need to hire somebody to make a revision sure. or I might have my friend edit it, but don't let those, the, the, you know, the, the place, like if you are going to be an actor or an actress, 
that's when you need perfectionism in your videos. If you are coaching uh, writers, then writing should certainly be a priority to get to get as as good as you can make it, and ha and have somebody look at it and edit it. And you know, you can't just put out things that are um, grammatically incorrect because you're thinking in terms of your niche. Um, same with if you are working with creatives, then uh, art directors and people of that nature, then you need to be thinking about the visual aspects of your website. So all this is linked to, to, um, to your niche as well. Yes. And, um, but really we see far too much like, ah, deer in the headlights mm -hmm. and procrastination. If you always remember that the t you have to be perfect or what happens is a good question to explore. Right. And underneath procrastination is always fear, fear of what? And answering those questions will get you close to the events you need to tap on for, um, for success and clearing it with EFT. Yeah. Right. And if you're looking to improve your skills yeah. in the writing, in creating content and all those things which helps to promote your business, then you may want to consider the EFT MBA mm -hmm. program yeah. that starts in May. Yeah. And you can find out more at EFTMBA.com, the EFT Marketing and Business Academy, which will be starting in May. Yeah. yeah. And we know that if we don't do tapping and have accountability partners right. and, and do tapping with us on a regular basis, things don't move forward. Nope. That yeah. makes such a, that makes a it, huge difference, a huge that kind difference. of support. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, and we'll be checking out the comments and and uh, ah, next and then next week, April second at yeah. eight thirty in the morning. Fear of putting yourself out there, discussing that. Yeah, and that could show up as fear of putting yourself out there, fear of success, fear of failure, fear fear of shining. Mm -hmm. all, all of that is like this mishmash of things that we often see with um, our EFT practitioner clients. Okay, thank Thanks for you. Joining us.